the presence of God again this evening. And let me thank God for every one of us, particularly those who have to ignore the traffic to come. The Lord will bless us and we will not regret coming in Jesus' name. Don't let us forget. Let's just keep the hope alive. Things will get better by the grace of God. In the name of Jesus. So let's quickly turn our Bibles to Proverbs 25. We're going to read the last three verses there. Proverbs 25. We will read the last three verses. Verses 26, 27 and 28 a righteous man who fought us before the wicked is like a murky spring and a polluted well it is not good to eat much honey so to seek one's own glory is not glory Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. May the Lord bless his words in our heart in Jesus' name. Olododo ti o si po pada ni wajwe ni ya buburu odabi orisun ti o wu ati isan omi ti o baje kodara la ti je o yin kupo be ni kodara Lati ma wa ugu ara eni eni ti ko si se akoso ara re o dabi ile ti owo lule ti ko si le odi okay this evening as i said last week we want to look at the efficacy of self control ni asale a ma wo agbara to wa ninu kikura eni ni janu i mean the yoruba translation simply explain what we are saying because when you say efficacy, it's like, ah, what, what are we talking about? We are simply talking about the power, the strength of self-control. And, you know, when we gather to pray sometimes, and we say, let's pray, let's, let's, let's bind our enemies. I don't know whether it ever crosses our mind that part of the enemies we need to bind is actually self. Now, there are three major enemies of man and woman. Three major enemies. I, I want you to begin to think in your mind those you consider or those things you consider as enemy and you discover that all those enemies will fall under these three categories. Number one, the lust of self. And what are these enemies? Or who are these enemies? Self. Sin. And Satan. Those are the three enemies. There is no other power that is contending with us outside of these three. Self. Tareni, sin. Ese, and Satan. Ati satani. And it might interest you to know that, you know, ordinarily when you look at those three, you say, ah, the father of the three of them is actually Satan. Satani. But I like to surprise you from the word of God that as powerful as Satan may look like, he doesn't have power over you until sin permits. And sin cannot permit Satan until self allows it. You know... I wasn't there, but they, they, they told this story. 
and uh, it's a very funny story but the day i had that story i i have not even become a pastor i mean that should be around 95 or 94. We, we, we laugh over the story but after a while it got me thinking and i gave it a serious thought and it's a serious thing they said somebody died in the village I mean, this is a true life story he died in the village and as, as they were taking his body to the church for burial that day they said one elderly and well respected man in the village he started calling the names of some women in the church and he said you you, you, you. Say you people will not talk now. Only say why, why, why? Eh, it's all nonsense. They are saying that uh, they kill this man. You people will not talk now. That you are not the one that killed this man. Once I pay one pa, I come in here. Eh, it's all nonsense. Pay you call the pa. Say because everybody knew that this man was a drunkard. But when you alone, I pay on multi ni ara come in here. And the day even that it was because he was coming from a beer parlor and he was knocked down by a vehicle and he died. They say, say you people, you people that they have caught, which is in this story, won't you talk that you are not the one that killed this one? And you tell Jaja, nearly alone with this one. Oh, two uncle Laja. Uncle Laja, and it's all okay, you call the part to the You know, when you they told, told that story, to to it sounded to. very funny, and we all laughed over it. That but I gave it a thought later on. That the man actually killed himself, it was the serving him that killed him. So when we talk about self-control, we are talking about how to bring self under control. How can we bring self under control? Now, when we talk about self here, it has to do with our own carnal nature. Yes, our own nature. The natural man in us. But oftentimes, this natural man is against the will and purpose of god and that's, that's what you know paul talked about in galatians chapter 5. if you look at galatians chapter 5 from around verse 14 15 16 down to the last verse of that chapter 5. Paul, he says the natural man is actually against the spirit against the things of god so this thing that yeah that's what you see verse 17 he said for the flesh desire what is against the spirit the natural man desires what is against the spirit now sin can only creep in into our lives when we allow what the self the natural man is asking for so it is now how to bring this self this natural instinct or this carnal nature under control that we are looking at this evening people who are slaves of sin they are people who have decided to do nothing about self when you hear people say that's my nature now by now everybody should know that that's me yes we want to know but that's you but we are also interested in having a good community so we can have a good community if you don't do with me and I don't deal with me Ah, 
So until, until we decide say, to deal with the self, we can't be where we ought to be as people of God. We, we can't be there. So, if you see anyone who is a slave of sin, it is the person who indulges self. So, when self says, I want to do this, he allows it. When self wants this, he allows it. And say, well, I don't know how many of us saw one video clip on the social media of a lady who weighs, I can't forget, I can't remember how many pounds now. She weighs so much that she can't move out of the house again. It's not, it's, it wasn't a drama, it's a she's from Haiti but the family came to settle in US and they live in this you know um, this uh, outskirts of Miami so I, I saw the video the, the children have tried all their best to help her watch her weight they took her to the hospital they did all this she had to be on medication she had to be this but whenever the daughters are around, she had, she had about four or five daughters. Whenever they are, they are not in the house, she picks the things that makes her to continue to grow big. In fact, they, they thought they had made progress. The children thought they had made progress because they tried, they tried, they tried the, the medication, this and that and that and that. They withdrew some food from her and all the rest and, and she shared some pounds. So by the time she went for the weight, they expected that the, the weight should have dropped drastically, but it was not really dropping. Until they cut her. Hiding soda. You know what they call soda? You know, even the name they call that thing makes me not to like that thing again. You know what they call soda? What we call minerals. <laughs> when we're growing up when they say something is soda it sounds somehow you know now so the first day they asked me soda water i said soda but i don't want soda it was after they passed by my side i saw that ah, so many are like soda i couldn't say give me again so i said no i don't want soda give me water so since that day i've been seeing soda as what soda <laughs> Now, they discovered that she will hide sodas under the bed, she will hide these, all the things that she was not supposed to eat. She she hide hide them. Them. And the doctors broke the bad news to the children that, look, <laughs> is there something happened in the next few months? The unthinkable may happen to your mother. In our own case, there is no uh, Satan anywhere that is stopping now. It is self. It is self. It is self. And this matter of self we are talking about this evening. I want you to look beyond spirituality, seeing all those things. I want you to also look at it even in our physical life. For some of us, even in our with our health, it has to do with self. There are some of us that we are required to do exercise, we are required to abstain from some food, we are required to do this for us to stay healthy. If somebody is looking for meat that has a, what's all right in English, facts. Because the thing we do in your mouth. I was at the program. I mean, I, I, I couldn't say I would know it because it was a, it was a dinner. So, and as I was eating, someone who sat not far from me saw me removing the skin of the chicken and said, Ah, hey, don't your pastor. I'm removing the one that caused trouble for me. Say, cause trouble, go by me. Uh, let's take it. <laughs> go by lies. 
Now, the issue of self is a serious matter. But we can handle it from the spiritual perspective, and that's what we are doing this evening. The KJV, that's King James Version, calls self-control temperance. And temperance has to do with temper. And that, that, that's what we mean by emotion. So, temperance or self-control has to do with bringing your emotion under control. Having what we call self-restraint. Having to do with self-denial. Come on. See, no, when my service is asking for this, I say, no, you can't get it. My service is asking for this, I say, no, you can't get it because it's not healthy for you. You know, you, know, you get to a age, there are things you shouldn't be taking. Uh, what do they call 50 CA Pepsi? <laughs> in the morning, early in the morning, you now get orobo. I get a bread. You eat it with a uh, wagon. <laughs> Jesus is Lord. <laughs> and before you go to bed, you must take another rubber. It, it has no where it's going. It's staying in the system. And you are overworking the insulins. Uh, you are overworking the system. So you, you when sometimes when you are seeing Orobo on the table and your self is telling you see Orobo, say no, no Orobo for you. You tell your body, lepa is okay, take this lepa water. It's okay. You don't need Orobo. So it's self-denial. It's self-discipline. Or self-control. But I have come to the fact that when we talk about self-control, what we mean is control of self. Now, the issue is you can't really control yourself on your own. We are going to see from the Bible now. Because it has to do with controlling not just your actions, but also your thoughts. There is no sin that we commit that is not processed in the mind. Even when somebody says, I didn't even know what was doing me. That time they took over his mind. That's what happened. When somebody, when you when you when somebody does something unconsciously. At that moment, his mind was already taken over by a power that is above him. We went to Ipaja last week. We were returning. It was just myself and the driver in the vehicle. And when we got to Shodi, we, we encountered little, you know, traffic. And uh, we were in that traffic. I just saw this this madman. He got to the median. Uh, that's the middle of the road. He stopped. And he looked at uh, Bragebre, the driver. I looked at him. He looked at him again. I said, Bragebre, he wants to know whether I can pass. So I think he himself was disturbed that the man was looking at him. <laughs> You know, when you get the place, Madman is looking at you. You have to be careful. <laughs> what does he think? Is, does he think we belong or what? <laughs> so I think he was disturbed. I was looking at him. I said, No, he wants to know whether I can pass. So Bragiri did like this to him then. He crossed the road. And I was interested. He watched the second vehicle. He crossed. I was interested. And he was going amongst the women that displayed their wares. I thought they were going to run. Nobody was running. I said, ah, is this unknown to them? Then he went inside and inside. Ah, so I shifted to see what was going on. 
And she went to the woman selling cigarettes and other things. And you know what she did? And the woman brought out the cigarettes, gave it to him. The woman brought out, I don't, I don't move, wait. The woman brought uh, Sache, you know Sache? And she see, rising. The woman gave it to her, to him. And he brought out money. Pay the woman. Ah! I said, whatever has taken over the brain of this man is wicked. That thing that took over his brain did not tell him to go and buy soap to bait. Did not tell him to know that what he was wearing was bad. But that thing told him to go and buy cigarettes. And to buy Chelsea. And he moved, moved his cloth again and was gone. I said, Why? I said, Why? Move, move, move. Because he will change, he will move to another level after taking those two. So, even when somebody does what he or she is not aware of, the mind has been taken over, the spirit has been taken over so there's nothing we do that is not processed in the mind or in the spirit before we do it so that's why self-control is not just about controlling our action but even controlling our thoughts remember Jesus Christ said it is not until a man sleeps with a woman that he commits adultery or fornication but when a man looks at the woman lustfully, Jesus Christ said he has what? He has committed it. Now, he says it is not until somebody carries a knife or a gun to kill. Yeah, but even if somebody wishes in his heart that Koti he has committed what? Mother. So, self-control is not just about no, you know, I don't know. You know, I watch cartoon with my children a lot. So, so there are some cartoons. It, it's only in cartoon I've seen things like that. Somebody will look at, will look at a cup on the table, and the cup will cup to a table, and the cup will rise and fall and break. Cup, you know, lost, okay. You but it looks like before. cartoon. But it says a lot about what goes on in our hearts. That in our hearts, sometimes we wish that somebody's success is destroyed. We wish that somebody's trophy should fall and, and break. So self-control is about putting our actions under check and putting our thoughts under check. It is a control of our spirit, our soul, and our body. Let me quickly let me quickly remind you how Paul struggled with this matter of self-control, then we will be running off very soon. Paul, Paul said in Romans chapter 7, verses 22 and 23. He, he said, I have a delight. I, I, I have joy to do what God wants me to do. He said, but there's something that goes on. I see a self in me that is saying, no, you can't do what God wants you to do. And I discovered that I'm not doing what I feel like doing for God. I see this self dealing with me and he moves on to say oh wretched man who is going to deliver me he said but thanks be to God who has delivered me through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ now by the time we got to Roman uh, to 1 Corinthians what Paul was thanking God for in Romans chapter 7 has fully materialized. So in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 26 and 
He said, look, <laughs> before, before I was having issues, but Jesus has taken over. Now, I do not run like one who runs aimlessly. Or box, box like one who beats the head. Now, he said, instead, I control myself. That's what he means by discipline. You know that he got a cane and was beating himself. No, he was talking about self-discipline, self-restraint, self-control. He said, but instead, I control myself. When myself said, I should retaliate. I tell self, I can't do that because I'm a child of God. When myself says, I should abuse back. No, no, I tell myself, I cannot do that. He said, instead, I discipline myself. And I bring myself under strict control. So that after preaching all around, I myself will not be disqualified. Now let's go back to our text. Let's move quickly. Let's go back to our text. In our text, we are told of how terrible it is for a righteous man to fall before a wicked man. I said, ah, oh, no, 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 no. It's like a polluted well. It's very unfortunate. Sometimes when some giants in faith force or they backslide, very unfortunate. We like to talk about it. We, we gossip. The church gossip. When we see a fellow believers falling into sin, the Bible tells us what to do in Galatians chapter 6. But instead, he said, ah, can you imagine what they said, Pastor? So, so, so. Did, did you hear what they said, Dick? So, so, so. Did you hear what they said, Brother? So, so, so. And you'll be preaching as if. So that's what Paul, that's what the writer of you know Solomon was referring to in Proverbs 25. He said, It's a bad thing for a righteous man to fall yakata. Can we see that verse 26? He said, A righteous man who fought us before the wicked. It's like a mocky spring. Where people should get water. It's not a good thing. It's like a polluted well. And what will make a righteous man to falter? Lack of self control. <laughs> Verse 27 now says, It is not too good to eat too much wine. You know what will make you see honey and say, Ah, not me. The person will say, Here you will die. You know what will make somebody to see honey and say, This is where you will die. Ah, he's going to die here. Eh? When next will he see only again? Ah, he's going to die here. Eh? Lack of self control. Because who doesn't like honey now? Who doesn't like honey? Only, again, symbolically, honey represents good things of life. When the Bible says God was taking the children of Israel to a land that is flowing with milk and honey. It was both literal and also symbolic. So, when we talk of much honey, we are talking about things of life. I buy this uh, list today. I see another person wearing another lace tomorrow. I want to buy. I want to buy. I want to buy. In buying, buying, I become a uh, umbese. In becoming umbese, I become what, what is the grandfather of umbese? Carry lace, a lake, Kara, Katoria, another one. Tell me a walk, Katora. And verse 28 now, 26 and 27 spoke in parable. 28 now make, made it so plain. Orike, did you know what? He said, if a man has no self-control, if a man cannot rule his own self, it's like a city with broken walls. And you know what walls 
means. World is symbolic of security. Is symbolic of protection. So when a man or a woman lacks self-control, the person has said bye-bye to security. Now, let's see what Proverbs 16.32 says about the matter of self-control. Proverbs 16.32. They will be winding now. Proverbs 16.32. It, 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 it says a lot about the need for self-control. It said, patience is better than power. And controlling one's self or temper is better than capturing a city. If I'm so strong that I can capture a city, but I cannot control my temper. I cannot control myself. Uh, the Bible says that's terrible. It's terrible. It's bad. All of these is telling us about the importance of self-control. Now let's move quickly. Why do we need to exercise self-control? I see three major reasons from the Bible, particularly from the New Testament. Honestly, every day, every day. You know, sometimes when you want to do what is not too good, though it may be conventional, it may be conventional that when somebody slap you, slap the person back. But when somebody slaps you and you did not slap back, and when you are now relaying the story, you now say, Who should buy me letting Ah, who fake back to me, but I'm cocoa for making my back. As he slapped me, I wanted to retaliate, but something. You are very lucky, you, and you are very blessed. <laughs> because we are going to see why I say you are very blessed now. You are not the one in charge at that time. It's the power of God that is in charge. So when somebody tells me that in Kokon, can match in two, they say, No, it's not in Kokon, it is the Spirit of God. When somebody says, No, it's not in Kokon. Something say I should not do something. I felt like I felt like slap. I felt like telling him that he's skinny. I felt like he's skinny, but something say I should not do it. It's not something. It's Holy Spirit. Three major reasons why we should exercise self-control in our day-to-day: -day. the food we eat, the clothes we wear, what we say, what we think, who we go out with, who we sit with, who we stand with, according to Psalm number one where you stand, where you sit, where you walk. Why we need to exercise self-control? Three reasons. Number one, because we are children of light. We are not of darkness. And wherever there is light, everything is shining. No hiding place. Can we quickly read that passage? First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 5 to 7. You are all sons, you can slash it, daughters, so that I don't think that it's only those of us that belong to God. You all belong to God too. After all, when God when he rose from the dead. You are all sons and daughters of light. And sons and daughters of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do. But let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. So, in other words, let us run away from activities of the night and activities of darkness. So, because we are children of light, we are to exercise self control. Number two, we need to also exercise self control. Because the end of all things is near. Because 
a student that knows that the teacher is coming, he will not do anything that will attract babies. But the one who doesn't know, that's what's happening. But the one where you tell my teacher, I'm born. You know, a student stood in front of the other student. Picked the chalk as it was in those days. And, and faced the blackboard. And he was mimicking their teacher. He was mimicking the teacher. Those of you that went to that Kondi school, you know where the wall of our classroom got to Abi. The wall was there, Abi. He was mimicking the teacher. Who oh, see you call it? Yeah. Who see two? Who see two? Who see two? Other oh, was saying it's Uti enough. Tu. It's enough. He was still doing it. Who see don't say lo. Who see two? Who two? I want you to He was still si mimicking it. Who see don't say you call it? And the teacher saw him very well. Who look all the data? And dealt with him. He dealt with him. Oh, about if he knew the teacher, the teacher was around, probably so, would have stopped. So, but my boy, who look all. But we are, we, we, we are told we may not know the exact day and time but we are told at the end of all things is near first peter chapter 4 verse 7 but the end of all things is at hand therefore be serious bring yourself under control don't be loose be watchful in your prayers. Number three, the reason why we need to put ourselves under control is because of the attack from the kingdom of darkness. There's one thing I know. How do you say one be a in English? One be a they no bond certain way. Okay, I didn't want to say it that way, but <laughs> since you have said it, no problem. <laughs> five satans, if it is possible, five satans cannot come and deal with us when we are with the Lord. He dare not. And I say, Pastor, say, Pastor, say, Pastor where do you see that? I will say, go and read Job chapter 1. As long as Job was with God, Satan dare not touch Job or anything belonging to Job. He needed to take approval from God. He needed to take permission from God to touch Job and his family. You know, the man that was killed by Joab, Habna. Abner to Joab. He was he could only kill him the moment he stepped out of the city of refuge. As long as Abner was in the city of refuge, even though jo, Joab was so angry with the father that, that, that Abner killed his younger brother, but he couldn't touch him. As long as he was in Hebron, because Hebron was one of the eight cities of refuge that God told them in the wilderness to set aside. So what did they do? What did Joab do? What did he do? He just lay him out of the city of refuge. And the moment he stepped out, he killed him immediately. And that's what Satan does. He knows he cannot get us as long as we are with God. He knows he can't get us as long as we control self. The one who First Peter chapter 5 verse 8. First Peter chapter 5 verse 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Put yourself on that check. Control yourself. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. He is seeking 
whom he may devour. So we need to put ourselves under control for those three reasons. The question now is how do we put ourselves under control? Again, I see three major ways from the Bible. Let me quickly run through that and we'll stop. If you will exercise self control. If I will exercise self control, we must have faith in Jesus and we must grow in our faith. We must grow in our faith in Jesus Christ. Let me, let, let me say boldly, if you don't have Jesus, you cannot control yourself. The foundation of self control is Jesus. If there is no Jesus, you cannot control yourself. That was what Paul did in, in the book of Romans. Toto, I won't abuse anybody. I'm, I'm pledging in your presence. Except those who don't anybody. Because of the people that surround me, as in all the abuse. The foundation of self-control is grow. Having faith in Jesus and Can I see Second Peter one three to six? I, I want you to see that passage. I love that Peter passage. I love. The, I want you to read it when you get home. Read Second Peter chapter one again. It's it's one of those passages. Even before I went to seminary in IDCs. That, uh, that has always ministered to me that it's one thing to have faith is another thing to move to another realm. He said for, the, for his divine, that's God's divine power has given us everything required for life through the knowledge of him who caught us by his own glory and goodness. By this, he has given us every great and precious promises oh, so that through them you may share in the divine nature. That's the nature of God. Escaping the corruption that is in the world because of evil desire. Self, self, self. Now listen. Listen. If that is going to happen, this is what you need to do. He said, for this very reason, if you are going to escape the evil desire of self. Make every effort to supplement your faith. So the day you came out and said, I'm giving my life to Christ. He said, that's very good. But supplement the faith. What will you supplement the faith with? Goodness. He said, don't stop there. Supplement goodness with what? By knowledge. By Louis Ma. He said, don't stop there. Supplement knowledge with what? Self-control with what? Endurance with what? And it goes on. So, there cannot be self-control until I'm growing in my faith. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, for us to exercise self control, we must be soaked in the grace of Jesus Christ. Wow. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. Let's see what he it says. He says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Is teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, self-control, righteously, and godly in the present age. If there is no grace overflowing in your life, ah, it's not easy. 
First Peter chapter 1 verse 13. First Peter chapter 1 verse 13. Peter ukene uri kene ese ketala. Therefore, get your minds ready for action. Being self-discipline and set your hope completely where on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Grace must be at work if there's going to be self-control. And finally, and that's why I said it is control of self. We need faith that is growing in Jesus. We need to be soaked in the grace of Jesus. But finally, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you. Huh. Just this evening, we are still discussing it in the MMU. One of the principles I live my life by is that people are responsible for what they do to me. But I'm responsible for my response. If somebody look at me as a pastor, somebody should abuse the pastor. Oh, you can try. 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 Oh, you can Oh, you Oh, you can try. Oh, you can try. Is responsible. If I retaliate, abuse back. I am responsible. If God wants to share, I will be responsible. But I will be responsible. But I will be responsible. Somebody made me to be a that I misbehave. God knew the person is there. But because you did now, let's see that passage, Galatians chapter 5. That's why we need to be filled with this. Now, listen. I say, then walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the loss of the self. For the self is always against the spirit. And the spirit too is against the self. And these are contrary to one another. So that you do not do the things that you wish. Verse 18. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Why? Verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness. Now, let me ask you this. When the Bible says you are to your faith, goodness, where did you think you are going to get it? You know, we read 2 Peter chapter 1. He told us the things we should supplement to our faith. That's another teaching on it. So maybe we'll look at that next year. Where, do you, where are you going to get it? It is from the Spirit. It's not as if you are going to go to Daleko Market or you are going to go to Shudi Arena. No. It is as the Spirit of God works in you that it's a goodness, faithfulness. Move on. Gentleness and what? So it is only when we are filled with the Spirit that there can be self control. So, look, people will always step on our toes. Uh -huh. But we must have self control. If we will not be slave to sin, and we will not become a prey in the hand of Satan. We must put self under control. The only way through which sin can come into our life and invite Satan to come 
is for us to listen to self and so not control self. So don't forget those three enemies. Self, sin, and Satan. But like 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 13 says, And these three abides, hope, faith, and love, but the greatest is love. I can say this evening, authoritatively from the word of God, that these three are contending with us, self, sin, and Satan. But the greatest of them is self. The most dangerous enemy we have is self. When you bring self under control, you are going to look at sin and say, look, I don't belong to your camp. And you are going to tell Satan, what are you looking for? Did you miss root? But if self is not under control, sin will uh, reign in our mortal bodies. When Oba. sin reigns in our mortal bodies, Satan dominates the affairs of our lives. That will not be a portion in Jesus' name. Do we have any question? Any question? In actual fact, I was going to take question and answer it next week. The I will take your question and answer it next week. Because I want us to close. Next week is question and answer. So I will take question. I will answer them next week. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. My question is during the when Jesus Christ comes back and we have entered into the 1000 year millennium at that time Satan will have been locked up in the bottomless pit now will not be contending with those that are alive then not be contending with limited sin and self now can we say that the absence of Satan at that period will not necessarily lead to increase in self and lustful pride. Okay. Do you have any other questions? Let me just quickly address that. Then maybe I'll talk more about it next week. Now, the, 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 the issue is when will the millennia be? Will it be before the locking of uh, uh, of Satan, don't forget that when Jesus comes that and he goes one. with the the saints, don't forget that there will be Antichrist will appear. So the, the, the question is, which we don't have details in the book of Revelation. The question is, will the rain be concurrently? Will it be concurrent? Why the millennia is going on? Will Antichrist also be dealing with people who are not part of it? Or will millennia take place before Antichrist deals with people? Or Antichrist will deal with people and millennia will take place? So it's not the, 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 these are options which are not clearly pinned down in the book of Revelation. But I, I think this is the way I normally like to answer questions bordering on that, even with fellow pastors. Is that since we are going to be in the millennia, let's not bother about what happened to those people. What is important is none of us here should belong to that uh, to that group. So let them worry. Let them worry about their future. Let's 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 move forward to our future of reigning with uh, with Christ, and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Once again, I want to I want to thank us for coming.